Je vous inviterai à prendre vos sièges et euh, nous euh, voulons commencer dans quelques moments. Euh... Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, good morning ladies and gentlemen. Euh, je voudrais vous souhaiter tous euh, la bienvenue à notre euh, annonce du gagnant du concours euh, de TRAM, euh, qui veut dire euh, recherche transformationnelle dans la santé mentale pour les adolescents. Uh, I'd like to welcome all of you uh, to our uh, um, uh, announcement of the winner of our TRAM uh, project, um, TRAM standing for uh, Transformational Research in Adolescent Mental Health. It is the child of um, the Graham Beck Foundation and uh, Canadian Institutes of Health Research. How, do one, how does one explain TRAM? Well, I think probably the best way is to show you a little five-minute video of uh, what TRAM was, what it took to put it together, and what it hopes to achieve. The Canadian Institutes of Health Research and the Graham Beck Foundation have joined forces to bring about transformational change in youth and adolescent mental health care in Canada. In June 2013, 17 applicant groups, along with the TRAM selection panel and partners, spent three days in intense discussion and debate. This unique workshop, which was both collaborative and competitive, was truly inspiring and hope-filled. You know, young people are the forgotten people of mental health, really, even though they bear the, the main burden of, of the onset of mental ill health from teenage years through to the mid-twenties. Um, we see an incredible increase in, in mental health problems during this period, mental health and substance misuse, and yet it's the weakest part of our healthcare system. The Beck Foundation continued with that idea and ended up meeting with Alain Baudet, who is the President and Director General of CIHR, Canadian Institutes of Health Research, and Tony and Alain realized that they had very similar aims and goals to try and improve the quality of mental health for youth and adolescents. And out of that was born the idea of TRAM. You're here today because of your strong dedication to helping youth who live with mental illness. The partnership moved um, from trying to, you know, discovering we had exactly the same kind of outcomes in mind, uh, and then working together to, to kind of build a process to get us there. Trying to pull together groups of people that have the same passion for changing things for youth, but who haven't had the opportunity before to be exposed to one another and to work together. The whole purpose of this event in Montreal has been to allow those teams to come together to hear what each other were proposing and then to find ways of collaborating or perhaps teaming up so that their proposals are even stronger. These 17 groups have come together with the view of trying to strengthen those proposals even further. So strengthen them in terms of the quality of the ideas and strengthen them in terms of the quality of the people who are involved. The objective is to create a, a network, a pan-Canadian network that will essentially revolutionize at some point um, mental health care and how young people are treated. In our own family, we'd had issues with one of our children suffering from quite severe depression and that had been really difficult. And to feel that we could be part of something that in Canada was making a difference for those uh, sort of people was just fantastic. We're taking in everything that we hear and we're saying like, how do we react to it? What? Does this make sense to us? Does it not? You get young people working together, engaged, excited about this issue so that more people feel comfortable reaching out to the help that the top end is developing. It's been a super impactful
empowering experience for me to be part of, to be asked as a youth at the table what matters to me. I think that's the whole question here. We keep the youth voice front and center that we are being heard and that we can remind them about what it's actually like for you on the ground with their families and their communities and what the impact in real life and the real world is going to be on us, not just in principle, but actually in practice. Alors maintenant, j'ai le plaisir de vous introduire à M. Alain Baudet, président directeur général des instituts canadiens de recherche en santé. Mais avant de lui demander de parler, j'aimerais demander à M. Beck, qui est le président de la fondation Graham Beck Foundation, de nous dire quelques mots. Thank you, Jacques. Um, yeah, I must say that video was fantastic. I think it really captures um, the spirit and the human side of, uh, of what we're trying to do, which, um, you know, um, ink on paper just doesn't uh, come close to doing. Um, but I'd just like to say, <coughs> you know, first of all, it's a great pleasure and, and with also with great excitement that um, Alain Baudet and I, on behalf of our respective organizations, the CIHR and the Graham Beck Foundation, um, uh, are announcing the launch of the TRAM uh, network, um, which you'll hear more about it and you got the, the sense of in the video. Uh, this is after almost two years of uh, a unique and really arduous process uh, to select by an independent uh, review committee, uh, much of what you saw the faces there uh, in the video, um, and uh, they chose the, the winning Pan Canadian multidisciplinary uh, team. And uh, this is a $25 million 50 50 uh, partnership between uh, CIHR and uh, ourselves. And this is the first of CIHR's SPORE programs, that's their strategy for patient oriented research. And the team is led by uh, Dr. Ashok Mella whom you'll hear from uh, shortly. The network is called Access and has about 200 members uh, on the team. <clears throat> uh, this announcement uh, signifies that Canada has reached an important and critical milestone on the path to ultimately transforming a dysfunctional mental health care system. And it's dysfunctional, or it has been for decades and decades, in spite of you know, uh, best efforts, Herculean efforts on the part of thousands of dedicated and brilliant and passionate uh, mental health care uh, workers. The problem is with the system as a whole, there's, you know, doesn't uh, provide adequate access uh, in too many cases for those um, at risk. And what's been accomplished with TRAM is really an amazing achievement on a number of fronts and should all uh, make us uh, optimistic that things are gonna change dramatically uh, for the better. Uh, in the mental health um, system. Uh, first, the network um, selected, Dr. Mella. Uh, he's a globally recognized clinical psychiatrist, a researcher uh, with a gr great uh, collaborative skills, and that should not be underestimated in trying to pull together uh, 200 or so mental health care professionals uh, across the country. And what this has done, uh, and also, um, in addition, the two um, networks that were not successful in receiving the grant, they also had hundreds of workers. And what this has done in itself is transformed the mental health care system and getting hundreds and hundreds of professionals working together for the first time. And um, this is, you know, hasn't happened before uh, in Canada. Um, the other thing I want to point out is the quality of the independent selection committee. Uh, that we put together with CIHR. We had truly outstanding people, outstanding young people advising uh, the selection committee. And what this did was to guarantee not just a rigorous independent process, but to have focus on excellence, world-class standards, which was their only objective. 
Uh, that's really what we wanted. We wanted a team that would be most likely to fulfill the mandate um, to do the transformative research that will be necessary uh, to change the system. Uh, just <coughs> along the way, I want to point out uh, Jacques Handlitz, who introduced me. Jacques has played a tremendous role as the TRAM lead representing CIHR and ourselves, working with the teams, working with the researchers. Um, and he's just played a, a, a critical role in making all this happen. Uh, Tony Phillips sitting here. Um, we go back many, many years. Uh, Tony's played a really um, critical role in sort of bringing about the whole process that could put this partnership uh, together. There's many, many more I could mention, but I don't have time for that. The model um, that we built is unique. People have told us they haven't seen anything like this before. Um, the way we chose the selection committee, um, the selection committee worked before, during, and after um, with the team uh, to ensure that we would get um, the end result that we really uh, were striving for. And secondly, it's, I think, a model of a public-private partnership. Um, and I think it's sort of had huge spillover effects in terms of other people saying, hey, this is really a good model. Let's do a lot more of that. And I think this can really uh, create a lot of change uh, in the system, uh, not just mental health, but much more generally. And uh, <clears throat> the second point I want to make is to emphasize this is just a first step an important critical first step, but it's a first step uh, in transforming um, what I think of as a pr pretty dysfunctional system in many, many ways. Uh, there's you know, many problems, as we all know, with the system. It's under-resourced, there's data problems, um, et cetera. But I think the choice of Ashok Mala as the lead and his team really should give us a huge amount of optimism that we're gonna overcome a lot of these obvious problems that have been plaguing the system for so long. Um, this is a team game, uh, as Pat McGorry, who you saw there, has said many times, we need as many players on the team as we can get, and, uh, and we've got to collaborate, and Ashok is, among as many other skills, he's a terrific um, collaborator. I also want to mention that the other two networks that had hundreds of people on their team did a huge amount of work. They're great teams, um, and we can't lose, um, we, we can't lose the involvement of those people in the bigger picture. They've got to play a role in the future uh, in changing the mental health care system, and we have to figure out how to do that. Um, <clears throat> the final point I want to make is with, with CIHR, an example of what a successful partnership can do to truly tr um, be transformative, to take a long-term view, and take significant calculated risks. Dr. Alain Baudet and CIHR have been amazing partners for us, and I want to acknowledge Dr. Baudet's courage, his vision, passion, his drive to take CIHR in a new direction with their SPORE project, of which this is the, the first one. Early on, we developed a huge trust, and I think this whole project would not have been possible without that trust. Maintenant, j'ai le plaisir d'introduire Dr. Alain Baudet, président directeur général des Instituts canadiens de recherche en santé. Merci, Jacques. Good morning. Bonjour à tous. It's really a great pleasure to be here today uh, for the announcement of this terrific initiative. Uh, la recherche en santé mentale a été, depuis la fondation des IRC, l'une de ses toutes premières priorités de recherche. Over the last 14 years, CIHR has supported the efforts of thousands of outstanding Canadian mental health researchers with over $600 million in funding. Their output has been world class. As a matter of fact, a, a report from the Council of Canadian Academies published in 2012 highlighted psychology and cognitive sciences as one of the two fields where Canada's international impact ranked in the top five worldwide. Yet, Despite these undeniable scientific successes, there's still a major gap between the production of research evidence and the systematic and widespread application of this knowledge to improve health. All too often, research results fail to turn into clinical applications, or promising solutions fail to extend beyond the teaching hospitals where they were first developed. 
to accelerate the impact of research results on disease prevention, diagnosis, and care, CIHR, together with partners from the public, private, and charity sectors, including provincial ministries of health, and that is important, have launched a strategy for patient-oriented research, or SPORE. Cette stratégie de recherche axée sur le patient vise à soutenir des programmes de recherche qui peuvent rapidement se traduire en de meilleurs soins et services et faire en sorte que chaque patient reçoive le bon traitement au bon moment. Pour ce faire, il est essentiel que chercheurs, cliniciens, patients et décideurs travaillent de concert dans l'élaboration de l'agenda de recherche afin de s'assurer que celui-ci réponde à la fois aux besoins des décideurs et à ceux des patients et de leurs familles. The TRAM network that is being announced today is the first pan-Canadian network created under the umbrella of SPORE. It is a transformative research initiative, as you heard, that ultimately aims to change the way mental health services will be delivered to adolescents and young adults affected by mental illness. It's a terrific opportunity and a real honor for CIHR to participate as a partner and co-lead with the Graham Beck Foundation in supporting this terrific initiative. An initiative, I should add, that will be watched closely by stakeholders, not just in Canada, but internationally. Because, make no mistake, this is not research as usual. Dr. Mala's network, Access Canada, was chosen after a very innovative, as you heard through the video, innovative, comprehensive, but competitive selection process. His proposal was judged to be the best poised to capture the perspectives of troubled adolescents and youth and to find innovative solutions for improving the mental health services we can offer them. J'aimerais remercier très sincèrement chacun des membres du comité d'experts qui a participé au processus d'évaluation par les pairs. Leur contribution a permis de définir et d'orienter de façon concrète les efforts nécessaires pour combler l'écart entre la recherche et l'amélioration des soins. Encore une fois, les IASC sont extrêmement fiers de s'associer à la Fondation Graham Beck pour ce grand projet. Nous suivons avec impatience les progrès d'Access Canada dans les prochains mois et les prochaines années. Bravo aux lauréats et merci à tous. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I have the pleasure of introducing Dr. Ashok Mala, who is uh, winner of the competition uh, for TRAN. Good morning. Bonjour à tout le monde. Uh, and thank you, Tony. Thank you, the Graham Beck Foundation, Alain and Jacques for leading ahead of me and putting a lot of responsibility on me. Ce matin, je parle au nom de Réseau Access. Ce acronym veut dire Adolescent, Jeune Adult, Contact, Communauté engageant sans dé délai, sans stigmatisation. Comme vous le savez, 75% de tous les troubles mentaux commencent chez les jeunes entre 12 et 25 ans, mais nos services de soins de santé mentale ont ignoré cette réalité. On top of that, we also know now that timely early intervention can prevent some of the more serious consequences of mental illness later on. These are simply now accepted as facts. Two groundbreaking recent events that have led to the funding of access that you already have heard this morning will, I hope, change this. I know my, uh, the previous speaker said it will. I'm saying I hope, <laughs> uh, because there's a lot of work to be done. The first was, as you heard, the Strategic Patient-Oriented Research Initiative from the Canadian Institute of Health Research. Something I can tell you honestly, I was waiting for years uh, that it would someday happen, and it did under the wonderful leadership of Dr. Alain Baudet. And then it was followed by the visionary partnership with the Graham Beck Foundation 
under the le leadership, of, leadership of Tony Beck. Of special significance, I think for all of us and for the Canadian mental health system, is that they chose youth mental health as the focus. Je tiens à féliciter et remercier à la fois la Fondation Grand Beck et les instituts canadiens de recherche de santé pour avoir financé Access. This is groundbreaking for many reasons, not least of all as an example of the profoundly important involvement of the philanthropic sector, which some people have called the, the third pillar of, of society, in addition to the substantial contributions and commitment from the federal and provincial governments. Cette initiative fera avancer la santé mentale des jeunes Canadiens pour une véritable transformation des services. Transformational Research in Adolescent Mental Health, TRAM, as you heard, was conceived of not just as another research project or another observational study, but as what some of us would call action research to transform our system of delivery of mental health care to youth and their families and to actually demonstrate the effectiveness of such transformation. And that is basically the, the uh, objective of this, uh, of access. Transformation requires real involvement of key stakeholders, most importantly of youth and families, and a real system change. This was well articulated in the announcement of TRAM. In access, we have made these two as the pillars of our proposed transformation. Why did we do that? Because we need real collaboration between those who have their expertise from training, like myself, many of my colleagues, people uh, who are in, sit in the, on the policy decision maker side, and those with experience-based expertise that is service using youth and their families and community organizations. And this is necessary in order to not only create a better system of care, but to actually understand mental illness better than we do currently because there's no better way to understand it than to hear from those who actually live with it. And this will help us to find uh, solutions to some big challenges that we have. The acronym ACCESS in it embodies the very values that will guide our transformations. The values that we arrived at collectively over a, over a period of at least one year involving all stakeholders working together, the youth, families, service providers, researchers, policy makers, and community organizations. Their involvement has been and will continue at every level from development through implementation and governance. And I think it's important that, that it continue through the process of governance and for testing its effectiveness. Access is national in its scope as it involves urban, rural, remote, and indigenous communities across six provinces and one territory. The provinces that are involved are Alberta, Saskatchewan, Ontario, uh, Quebec, both Montreal and Northern Quebec, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and Northwest Territories. Our transformation will have the following essential components. We will use innovative and multiple methods for early identification of those who are in need of service. Once identified, youth will have quick, flexible, and easy access for an initial assessment to determine their needs and the most important appropriate service response from the system. This will be provided in youth-friendly, newly created spaces or in the existing primary health care or in education settings, depending on the person's choice. Youth who are in need of specific interventions, and not all of them will be in need of specific interventions, will be connected to services based on the severity and stage of the presenting problem and in a form and structure that will be acceptable to the youth and their families. These services will in the process be reconfigured to avoid transition based on the magical age of 18 and delivered with an engaging, sensitive, youth-friendly, compassionate, evidence-informed, and contextually guided culture of care. The context comes from 
differences between urban rural, uh, issues of ethnicity, immigrant status, remote uh, communities, indigenous communities, and so on. Nous allons également commencer à répondre aux besoins de spécifiques des jeunes dans les communautés autochtones, les sans-abri et les jeunes ayant des contacts avec le système criminel et la justice. We will demonstrate the effectiveness, feasibility, and scalability, and that the latter is very important, the scalability of this transformation at multiple urban, rural, remote, and Aboriginal community sites across Canada. The work conducted by Access Canada Network over the next five years, I hope, will serve as a model for youth mental health service transformation across the country. On behalf of the Access Network, I want to thank you all and thank you, CIHR and Graham Beck Foundation. Merci, Dr. Mala. Thank you, Dr. Mala. Um, before we take questions um, from um, from the audience and you, I, I, I'd like some the participants to come up and, and and help us take pictures. So Tony and and yeah, Tony, Alain, uh, Dr. Mala, and Ray, who's been a quiet voice behind Tony. So let us. Uh, Thank you. 